Hello and welcome to 10forums.com. In this video I'm going to do a, a quick introduction to using provisioning packages and using the scan state command to save customizations that you might make on a, on a Windows setup. Windows 10 includes a new technology called provisioning packages which can be used to save or deploy customizations which might be made when the PC was set up which includes uh, software installation and drivers. In this video we're going to look at um, a provisioning package being used to save customizations and reloading them when the computer is reset and also including them in a custom recovery drive so that if you need to ever need to recover the PC if it won't boot for example you can use a recovery drive and actually put the software back onto the PC. So this might be useful if you were setting up a PC for a family member or a friend and it means that they could perform some of the recovery tasks themselves without needing other intervention or for you to be there. Now, there is a warning, which is that at the time of writing this, which is before Windows 10 has been released, some of these functions are unreliable. They might not work for you and you might lose everything on your computer. So before you start, make sure you do have a full backup, for instance, using some third party software to make an image of the computer before you start. In this video, I'm going to use the scan state command to capture my Windows Win32 or desktop software and drivers into a provisioning package. Then once I've done that, I'm going to create a recovery drive including that package and I'm going to also test what's happened by running a reset to see if it puts things back and then also we're going to test it by restoring the recovery drive that we create. So you will need a computer or a virtual machine to customise and I recommend using a virtual machine because it gives you a chance to experiment with things without uh, damaging your main computer that you use all the time. Before you attempt a reset or recovery, please make sure you have a good backup of whatever machine setup you want because it will be overwritten. If you're using a virtual machine, then you'll need something that can boot from a VHD file such as Oracle VirtualBox when we get to the point of trying to restore the recovery drive. So the first thing I want to do is to download and install the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit or ADK. Now, this contains several tools which will allow you to customise and deploy Windows 10 setup. And you can either download and install a specific tool, or you could download the full installer, which you could then install on multiple computers later. For this purpose, for this video, I just want to use one aspect, which is the user state migration tool, the USMT. I will put a link in the notes of this video, which will show you where to download the ADK from, which will probably change over time. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I've already downloaded the ADK setup.exe file and stored it on my computer. So I've already downloaded ADK setup.exe. I'm going to run as administrator and I'll get the choice between downloading the whole ADK for future use, which I can copy to another computer for instance, or just installing specific elements and I'm going to install. There's a choice to make about privacy, about collection of data, and then in a minute there'll be a license agreement to look at. Once you accept that, then you get the choice to choose which components you want to install from the ADK. Now I just want to install the user state migration tool today for this purpose, but you might want to download other, other, other elements for other things you might want to do with the ADK. Then when we click install, I've shortened this considerably, it takes a lot longer than this. And then we have the, the, um, the end point of that installer. Now I'm making this video before the release of Windows 10, and at this point the the ADK and the scan state tool within it at the moment doesn't contain all the required files in the same folder that it depends on to create the, um, the provisioning packages. So we need to copy some files and merge them into one folder. I'm going to copy them into a, a folder I'm going to create called temp uh, slash scan state. So I'm going to run some xcopy commands to copy from the, the ADK setup folders into my new folder. Folder C Recovery Customizations seems to be a special folder which has got special meaning to Windows 10. Um, by putting files in this folder, they are used by the reset and recovery drive process. Uh, the flip side of that is you have to be very careful what you do with that folder. I wouldn't add extra files in there, I'd make sure you don't delete anything from there that, should, that was there before. So be being very careful with what you do with that folder. So first I'm going to open an elevated command prompt with admin rights. Then I'm going to create a folder for recovery customizations to hold the package. I'm going to also make a temporary folder to hold my scan state files. 
Again, I do an X copy command to copy it from where it was on the, the ADK installation um, into my new folder. And then I copy the second set of files into the same folder. Now I'm going to run the scan state command itself. You can see the command line I'm going to run here. Um, so the slash apps switch and the slash drivers switch will copy the applications and drivers into a provisioning package, which will be C recovery customizations usmt.pkg in this example. Um, if you like, you could also save that uh, ppkg file yourself to an external file or to an external disk for later use. Once again, I've speeded up this process slightly for the video. Um, how long it takes will vary depending on how many drives and how many applications you've got installed on the PC. Now the provisioning package has been created and saved in the recovery customizations folder, it should be picked up when we create a recovery drive. So that's what we're going to do next. Go to the control panel, recovery and create recovery drive, and we will create it. So we'll open up control panel, and then from there, I'm going to go into the option called recovery, and just change the icons to small icons. Go to recovery, and then I'm going to use the option to create a recovery drive and say yes to the UAC prompt. So there's an option here to back up system files to the recovery drive. Uh, we definitely do want to do this. Then we start the process. Now this took a long time when I tested this. It's on a, a small virtual machine, but it took an hour or so to do this. Um, I can see the CPU was going and I can see it was doing some work, so I let it go, but it did take a long time. You will need an external USB drive to record the recovery drive onto. In this case, because I'm using a virtual machine, I've got a VHD file which is mounted to emulate a USB. So that's appearing here. Um, a warning that everything on the USB drive will be deleted, and I click create and again let it do the process of creating the drive. Again, I've speeded this up because it again takes quite a while. So if this is a real machine, then I'd be pretty much be finished at this point. I've got my recovery drive and I've got a, a provisioning package in the recovery folder, so it should uh, be safe if I wanted to reset it or use a recovery. However, because I want to test things out, what I'm going to do now is go into my uh, machine and uninstall some applications, such as Firefox and Adobe Reader, then try a reset and see what happens. I'm going to go to Programs and Features in Control Panel and right click to uninstall Firefox uh, and then also Adobe Reader. So now those applications are uninstalled, I'm going to go to settings and then go into update. And then pick the recovery option and then use the option to reset. 
So in this case, I'm going to do a complete reset. I'm going to wipe out everything, any user files, any users. Um, it's, it's, it wipes out everything on the disk. So there is an option to keep my files, which I haven't tried in this case. I'm going to use remove everything today. There's now a question to ask if you want to clean the disk of any deleted files or anything that if someone else had the PC, they might be able to recover. In this case, I just want to remove the files because it's a virtual machine. We now get a warning to say it's going to remove everything when I click reset. I click reset and then the process should start. Um, as before, I've speeded this up because it does take quite some time. We now arrive at the same setup screen you'd see if you were setting up the computer for the first time. So I choose my home region, there's a licensing agreement to read and accept. Also I can customise if I don't want the express settings, uh, make a couple of changes there. Then it will process for a while and reboots and it does some more setting up. All the previous user accounts have been wiped, so it comes in and asks me, because I've got no network connected to the computer at the moment, to create a local account, which I've done. Then it goes through, again, some more, some more setup processes. And we arrive at the desktop, which you see has now got the default wallpaper back. And you remember that we uninstalled Firefox and Adobe Reader. The icons have come back and I'm going to click on the Firefox icon to see if it opens up the application, which it does. It's lost all settings that we had previously, but the application itself has come back because it was saved in the provisioning package. The second test I'm going to try is to use the recovery drive that we created earlier on and try reinstalling Windows from that drive. Now the scenario in which you'd use this is if the Windows computer won't boot at all um, or if there's some other problem where you need to reinstall the system. I've set my virtual machine to boot from the recovery drive. You get the familiar uh, Windows icon. first thing it's going to do is ask me to choose a keyboard layout. I'm going to choose United Kingdom because that's where I am. Then I'm going to choose Troubleshoot and the option I'm going to choose in this menu is to recover from a drive which appears because I've created it. Choose that option. Again a bit like the reset there's some options to choose if I want to wipe the disk um, completely, including any under any old files, or just recover it. So in this case I'm just going to remove the old file, remove the old files and install the new version of Windows. There's a warning about what it's going to do. I'm going to click on recover and set the process going. And again this is one process that I've speeded up. Once this process completes, uh, it looks very similar to the reset. We have the same setup screens that you would get on, on an ordinary setup. Um, and then again, it's going to reboot and do more processing.
As before, I'm not connected to a network, so I have the option to create a local account on the PC. And we're back at the desktop as before and again you can see Firefox and Adobe Reader have come back um, this time it's from a completely wiped disk and I'm going to uh, try Firefox again and as before it's lost all settings but the application itself is there and that's it We've used the ADK tool called ScanState to save the software on the PC into a provisioning package. We've then put that into the recovery customizations folder, which means that when we do a reset, it will, um, it will recover the software. We've also created a recovery drive, and at that point in the real world, you would stop. But for the purpose of this video to test it, I've also used the reset process and used the recovery process to demonstrate that the applications do come back when we do those.